So I've been thinking a lot about state management lately in an Angular application. And the more that I think about it, the more that I feel strongly that there are sort of two parallel paths of communication application. There's the state management path, and then there's also a general event-based path. And for the latter, I wanted to try and create a message bus in Angular using RxJS subjects. And I wanted to try to do so with some degree of type safety. So uh, first, let's just look at how this is going to be consumed. So this is my app component here, and I have a button for sending messages, and then I have a button for subscribing and unsubscribing from said messages. And um, in the constructor here, you can see that I'm injecting this message bus service, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, I'm actually not storing the message bus. I'm storing something called a message bus group. And essentially, the message bus group is just a thin proxy around the message bus that keeps track of subscriptions so that I can unsubscribe and, uh, from a particular set of subscriptions all at one time. But again, we'll look at that in a minute. So send messages. Here you can see that I'm emitting messages. And the messages are actually class instances. And that way, we can get type safety on what the events hold. So I have event type A, B, C, and D. Each of them expects a payload of a, of a different structure. And again, we'll see how these are, are put together in a minute. Um, subscribing to messages reaches into that message bus group, which again is just a thin wrapper around the message bus service. I have several ways to subscribe. One, you can use the dot subscribe method. And you'll see that uh, we have to annotate our incoming argument here with the event types that we're expecting because the message bus is fairly generic and not generic in the TypeScript generic sense, generic in the it's not coupled to anything. It can send any kind of messages. The message bus doesn't know about the application which is being used, so I had to keep it uh, pretty generic, which means that we have to push some of that type safety into the event handlers here. And you can see that uh, essentially the event workflow uses a discriminated union, which means that we look at a particular property that's on all of the events, and then we can switch on that by having different cases. So event type A dot type, event type B dot type. Uh, TypeScript can then say, okay, within this block, we know that it is an instance of event type B, and therefore we can validate the access to the event properties and the payload properties as well. Um, we're also exploring the idea of using the discriminated union or navigating the discriminated union using the instance of. So in this case, I was using the type uh, property. And in this case, I'm actually using the, the class type itself. So if, it's, if event is an instance of event type A, then again, TypeScript can make assurances about what event is in this particular block here, knowing that it's a type A, which means that I have certain payload properties. Now, I also have another way to subscribe which is the dot on method. And the dot on method differs from the dot subscribe method in that it accepts a filter type as the first argument, which means that this callback will now only be called on events uh, where the event is of that particular type. And because I'm passing in that type, at this point, TypeScript can actually do some type inference. And we know that the event that's coming through in the handler here is going to be of event type C, which is why I don't actually have to annotate this argument. Uh, in reality, I might do it anyway because I like the type annotations, uh, but the TypeScript compiler can still make assurances about what uh, event is in this particular callback. Um, all right, so let's take a quick look at the browser just to see what's going on here. So let me just refresh, make sure we have the right code. So right now, nothing subscribes. So you can see I can send messages and nothing's happening. Now, if I subscribe to the messages and send, you'll see that here are all the console logging in our event handlers. I can send that a bunch of times. And if I unsubscribe and then try to send again, you'll see that uh, we get nothing. I can subscribe and send again, and the events are going through. Okay, so let's take a look now at first, let's, let's look at these event types to see how this discriminated union is working. So I didn't do anything super special with my event types. Uh, essentially, I'm using the same sort of approach that everything else seems to take when it comes to state management, which is that I have this type property, which it ends up being my uh, differentiator in a discriminated union. Uh, the thing that I've tried to do here is remove some of the repetitive code. So actually, none of my events down here, like event type B, event type C, and so on, none of them have a constructor because they all extend this event with payload class, which is a generic class that tells it what type of payload interface to expect. And you can see that this uh, event with payload is the base class that actually has the constructor. So th there's definitely some verbosity here because I have to do the extends and the generics and whatnot. But uh, essentially what happens is 
each of the actions or the events here simply has the payload interface and then the type. Now what you'll notice is that each class here has both a static type and an instance type. And in fact, the instance type simply pulls from the static type. And I did that so that I didn't have to sort of juggle this parallel set of classes and event types. Instead of having, say, an uh, event type C type or action type, uh, I just make that part of the class definition itself. And the benefit to this, in my opinion, is that if we look at the app component, I can import just a particular event type, and I don't have to also import an event type action type because when we go down we look at our discriminated unions the event type also acts as the container for the discriminating property so in that sense I don't know it felt a little bit cleaner to me and again I didn't have to have any constructors here that do nothing or just set a public payload um, you know what I lack in constructor though I do make up for oops in this uh, extends kind of verbosity and then of course, just like everybody else, I'm exporting this as a union type. Okay, so now let's take a look at the message bus quickly. The message bus, as we'll see in a second, is really nothing but a thin wrapper around an RxJS subject. So the message bus simply instantiates the subject and then exposes its own emit and subscribe methods. And the emit and subscribe methods, you can see, just really turn around and call methods on that subject. So when I emit event, all I'm doing is calling next on event subject. And then when I subscribe, uh, you'll see that I'm really just turning around and calling subscribe on that underlying RxJS subject. Now, of course, I don't want to expose the RxJS subject uh, publicly because it has event, it has methods that I don't want the public to be able to use, such as the dot next method. So it, I have to create some sort of wrapper. Now, the benefit of creating that wrapper is that I actually get to also implement my own error handling such that if the uh, event subscriber throws an error, I can cleanly handle that inside of, of Angular's error handler. And that way I can kind of uh, dovetail nicely with the abstraction of error handling in an Angular application. Uh, also, I didn't want the errors to get swallowed or have to worry, have to have people worry about passing error handlers to the subscribe, which I think is kind of nonsensical maybe. Um, but anyway, again, it's very simple. And then this message bus group is essentially just a, a very thin wrapper around the message bus service. And you can see that it just keeps track of subscriptions. So in this case, when you subscribe, all I'm doing is taking the subscription return from the message bus subscribe, I'm pushing it onto this internal collection. And that way, when you would unsubscribe from the group, I just have to loop over those subscriptions, unsubscribe from them uh, one at a time. And, uh, and it just makes it a lot easier to keep track of subscriptions in a particular context. So this is just a fun exploration. Um, I'm not particularly familiar with RxJS and I'm certainly not uh, all that familiar with TypeScript or at least the advanced versions of, or properties of TypeScript. So most of this was just sort of trial and error, getting stuff to work, seeing what the compiler would accept, seeing what uh, provided for, let's say a, a sufficient amount of type safety. Uh, while keeping the code, I think, fairly simple. Um, there's not a whole lot of advanced concepts here. You know, the message bus events are, this is probably the most advanced thing in this entire demonstration. And even that I don't think is is uh, without uh, able to, it's, it's, I think it's easy enough to reason about. So um, anyway, I, you know, just a, a direction I'd like to continue to explore. Uh, because again, going back to the idea of state management, I do feel strongly that there is a need for a, a parallel pathway of communication that isn't just about state mutations, but is generally about a cross or an application-wide event stream. So uh, more to come on this.